Hey everybody, it's Tugboat Timmy here. And today we're gonna to be talking about what a trucker should have in their go bag in case of tragedy strikes. And today we're lucky to be here with Family Man Prepper. Everybody, uh, let's get into it now. I'm here with, again, Travis, and we're going to pack a go bag today um, that is kind of tailored to what a trucker would need. Um, some of the things that my concerns that I brought up to Travis as he was thinking of some of the stuff to put in this bag is we wanna be lightweight, we don't want it to take too much room in our truck and where it should be in our truck. Right, Travis? That's right, Tim. Excellent. Well, truckers are in a unique situation already to begin with because they're constantly, constantly on the go. So it's not going to be your everyday get home bag or bug out bag. So what we're going to start out with is the bag itself. You need to find a bag that you can designate as your bug out bag. And if it has uh, markings on it or bright colors, reflectors, it always helps. So now that we have this, let's start talking about our basic needs. What are we going to fill this with? Basic needs. What's the most basic need? Well, that's simple. Water. So we're going to start there. So what we want to talk about is food. Now we have a lot of options when it comes to food and everybody's going to have their personal preference, but just some things to get you thinking. You can get some freeze dried foods and we have, here's one for dinner. Here's one for breakfast. Um, some of the lighter weight things that you can pack in there would be like a cliff bar. And these come in an assortment of different flavors as well. And they won't take up very much space and they are loaded with energy. Don't now, they have a high shelf life too, Travis? They have about 25 years. They, so if they're they'll outlive you. Yeah, they'll keep. Yeah. They'll, they'll last for a long time. This is a hard tack. This is a high energy bar. These are absolutely disgusting, <laughs> but they will save your life. This is not something that you want to eat. Like if you just need to pick me up, you might have a clip bar. These are for that emergency situation. You're stranded and you need to eat to keep your calories, to keep moving. This will last indefinitely, speaking of shelf life, Timmy. That does not so expire. That's, that's last resort, guys. That's last resort. You don't want to have that for dinner. Okay, now that we've got our food and our water tucked away nice and safe in there, we need to start thinking about the other end, which is having some TP on hand. Or perhaps if your preference is baby wipes, those work good too. But we'll throw some TP in there for today. Now, moving on to some other little essentials that maybe you can put into some of the zipper pockets that you'll find for your bag is little things like a whistle, right? That works good. And a whistle that has a built-in compass. See, I like this one because it's a two-in-one deal. So if you could find something like that, that's what I would recommend. There as you a go. Two for one. Now, paracable is really strong rope. Guys, I don't need to explain to you as truckers what you can use this for, right? Yeah. This is everything. It's always nice to have trash bags with you. Yes, for the obvious for trash. These could also be cut and used as a poncho. You can come up with all sorts of reasons to have trash bags with you. Okay, so just a small roll, maybe a roll of 10 to 20 bags. Now, you need something for self-protection. Now, this is going to vary between the individual, what you're comfortable with what level you're at. This is just an example of some pretty heavy uh, mace or bear spray that you could carry. Now, if you're going to carry something like mace in a bag or pepper spray, you got to understand this stuff is heat and cold sensitive. You can't keep it in the truck if it's going to get really hot or really cold in the truck. So you might think about other options. Tim, are there other options? Yes, yeah, definitely. There's other options as a trucker. It doesn't have to be mace. Uh, whatever weapon or self-protection that you're comfortable with, uh, I strongly suggest that that's what you have accessible to you in case of an emergency. Right. And some more little things that we can have in the pocket is, of course, guys, a pocket knife, right? You can do all sorts of things with this. Now, one of the last areas we're going to talk about in our bug out bag would be a medical. You need a light first aid kit. And this bag has an area that at the bottom here, you can store away just the first aid section of your bag that way you know you can get to that stuff nice and quick so some of the things that we have in this for an example this is for an epi pin if you carry an epi pin you're going to want a designated case or insulin it will help carry your needles your insulin and that way you know this one is that specific item 
This is just a, a general type of a first aid kit. And it has a little bit of everything in here. It's not too fancy. We'll open it up and we'll take a look. Now, when we talk about first aid kits, Travis, everybody's first aid kit is going to be different. You're going to carry the items that you want. But today we're going to talk about some of the stuff that Family Man Prepper here thinks we should have in there uh, in your bag. Right, well, Trav? That's right. And this is a, a light first aid bag. This is nothing fancy. You don't need training to use any of this stuff. But it's pretty important to have just to keep you safe here. We'll start out with some of this. This is just a sting relief. You know, we talked about the mosquitoes a second ago. If you get a bug bite, you can just rub that on there. It takes away all the itchy and the pain. This is just some alcohol swabs. Now, we're going to move into bandaging here. So we have a couple different types of bandaging that you can think about. This is more like an ace bandage that you can wrap around and it's self-adhesive. So you don't need any tape. It'll just stick right to itself. Okay. So that comes in handy. A gauze. Okay. You're going to need gauze of different size and thickness. Okay. I carry two gauze and one ace bandage. That'll patch up a lot by itself. If you have a larger wound, you're going to need an actual pad. Okay. Now, this one's a little bit more serious of a guy. If you have a real gusher and you can't stop bleeding. And remember, guys, if we're talking about we're in a bug out situation, there's no hospital. There's no help. This is you have to help yourself or you're in big trouble. So you need the equipment with you. Okay. This is just a basic finger splint. This is this is more important than you think because sometimes walking, you can jam a toe, a finger. This will allow you to shape it. It foams and shapes right to that's, where you need it to be that's and at that cool. point you can just wrap it and you're ready to go again now we have some gloves uh both nylon and uh ni uh not nylon okay in case some people have allergies uh antibiotic you can use neosporin but any triple about um triple antibiotic will do and we have some medical tape and this last little one that we call a boo box this would be taking care of just your your little scrapes you have some more ointments. This is for splinters. If you get a splinter on the road, this is burn gel. Most essential to have some burn gel and then band-aids. And then these would go over your fingers. If you got a cut, you put a band-aid on it. And if you're outside to really help that cut stay clean, you can put this over top and it'll keep out all the infection. And then also, you know what? One of the most important things that you can have is a power bank. Uh, a generator of sorts. Now this is a solar generator and it's got a couple plugs, USB, so that you can do phones, you could do heaters, fans, it can run uh, little little uh, refrigerators, nothing too strong, but you can also set your phone on top and it can just charge it really easy. There's also the emergency light that comes in the back. So having a generator like this, and again, it runs on solar. So it has a panel wow. that you can just charge it right up and you'll never be without power. Now, Travis, this has speakers on it. Those are not speakers. These are air vents. Oh. Because any generator that's going to be worth its salt needs to be able to cool itself down. It's going to heat up if not. Interesting. And that that's the difference. This is something that's going to be a real power bank for your truck versus something like this. doesn't need a fan because these are just little power banks. Something that you could charge up at the truck stop and then use it later on the road to charge a phone or even run a small light. And these normally come in different colors and they're not that hard to operate. They're normally one or two button type situations. That's a good thing. This one has a built-in flashlight. That's kind of cool. So that's happening. Now, I hope this video helped you guys today get some ideas on what you should put in an emergency go bag and what you should put in a bag that would prolong uh, for more of a prolonged stay. Now, if you guys like this content, make sure you like and follow ATBS's YouTube page. Uh, Travis, thanks for uh, having me here in your house today. I had a fantastic time. I really enjoy these topics, guys. I think maybe we can do more videos in the future. Absolutely. My name's Travis. I have a small channel on YouTube. It's Family Man Prepper. Hope to see you there. Until next time, guys. Now, that's all I got to say. Tugboat Timmy, out.